Take you the journey of LV inflow obstructions. This is the last part of the LV infrastructure obstruction which I wanted to share with you. Is uh, infravalvular uh, the mitral valve involvement? I showed you what pulmonary venous obstruction. I showed you an obstruction in the right left atrium by a cot right atrium. I showed you supramitral ring. I showed you intramitral ring. Now I'm going to show you structures which can obstruct LV inflow which are inferior to or distal to the mitral valve. What it could be? Now this is a recent nomenclature which you can use. I'll just skip that quickly so that you can note down this is the nomenclature we use these days for a type of LV inflow obstruction that is supravalvular, valvular and type 2, subvalvular type 3 and type 4 is the mixed kind of obstruction. The very common, it's nothing common, it's very rare, but out of this rare category, this is common and this is what we call as an arcade mitral valve or a hammock mitral valve. For a surgeon, it is a hammock because surgeon is looking from the top, from the atrium, it looks like a hammock to him. From a cardiologist who is doing an echo, it looks like an arc to him. So both are the same thing, arc mitral valve or hammock mitral valve. What is hammock and arc mitral valve? Basically, there is a fusion of the papillary muscles. There is a fusion of the cordy. Cordy can be short, cordy can be irregular, cordy and mitral uh, apparatus can insert proximally rather than going towards the apex. Look at this case here. This is the mitral valve and this is what an uh, arcade it's making or hammock it's making. This is a short papillary muscle. The cordy are fused with each other. On a four chamber view, you see this is a short papillary muscle. This is grossly abnormal papillary muscles, short and attached quite proximally rather than right at the mid and apical part of the LV and then you see this uh, doming of the cordy which are fused with each other it's called a hammock valve and then it's producing mitral stenosis and mitral regurgitation. The next variety is a parachute valve. What is a parachute valve? That's a normal valve where you have a cordy attached to the each respective papillary muscles okay so this is the mitral valve once the cordy are fused with each other but i mean that's the hallmark which tries to differentiate it from hammock or uh, uh, arcade valve is that there is a single papillary muscle now this is a single papillary muscle the cordy are attached to the single papillary muscle depending upon the fusion of the cordy uh, the degree of stenosis would be there. And then there is another condition where you see the papillary muscle. If you have a single papillary muscle, this is parachute mitral valve. If you see a single large muscle, one rudimentary small muscle, then we have another terminology called parachute-like asymmetric mitral valve. So both are clubbed together uh, in the parachute mitral valve. Showing you a case of a parachute mitral valve, it really looks like a parachute, doesn't it? Now you see this cordy are attached, fused, and they are attached to a single papillary muscle here, and that's why it is called a parachute mitral valve. Then you see this patient of tetralogy of fellows, you see a large VST, an aortic override, from the right ventricle, left ventricle, blood is going to the aorta. There is a mild aortic regurgitation. And then you see this pulmonary stenosis and a mild regurgitation. But then you see the mitral valve. You see this kind of a cordy. You thought that this could be a arcade mitral valve. But this is attached to a single papillary muscle which tells us this is a parachute mitral valve. Now another condition is a double orifice mitral valve, mitral valve rather than having 
single orifice ha can have two orifices that does not qualify for any obstruction but if one of the orifice is blocked it would become a mitral stenosis i am going to show you an example of that and this is an atrial view you see the two separate orifices this is a ventricular view you see the two orifices now this is a patient with double orifice mitral valve and this orifice is not opening at all this is a tractic you get a single orifice and that single orifice has a single papillary muscle so that means this kind of thing is a parachute valve and a double orifice you can see the double orifice here in a subcostal view which is very clear you see one orifice is a tractic closed no flow across it only one orifice is opening there is a condition called a shown complex which includes multiple left ventricular inflow and outflow obstructions you can have a parachute valve you can have a sub aortic stenosis one can have a supra valvular supra mitral ring or one can have a coarctation or interruption of the aortic arch you have to have minimum 3 to make the diagnosis a shown complex and there has a very clear genetic association i'm going to show you a shown complex in 24 weeks uh, gestation fetus and you see this is a parachute valve shown by an arrow then you see the single papillary muscle confirming that this is a parachute mitral valve then what you see here is a sub aortic stenosis apart from the vst you see a sub aortic stenosis third component you see the aortic valve which is also thickened and domey and the fifth component of shown complex is do you have an interruption of aortic arch aorta rather than coming from here to the lv is filling retrogradely from pulmonary artery becoming a subclavian artery and a left common carotid so type b interruption of aortic arch completing the shown complex now this is the fetal echo we did on a 20 weeks of gestation the mitral valve looks quite abnormal and we thought to differentiate between arcade valve versus a parachute valve and you see it's opening like this but once we saw there is the two papillary muscles but cordy are thickened so this was a arcade mitral valve rather than a parachute mitral valve their surgeries are different that's why we need to differentiate occasionally you see the cordy like this and you think it could be a parachute valve but this is a lax cordy of anterior mitral leaflet but the differentiating point is that you have two papillary muscles if you have two papillary muscles then this cannot be a parachute mitral valve now i'm showing you another case of mild stenosis where the papillary muscles are abnormal you see this abnormal papillary muscles right and then the red arrow you see some other structure which is connecting the papillary muscles let me show you here now this is a structure which is connecting yeah this is the structure which is connecting two papillary muscles okay so producing a mild mitral stenosis i take you further the same case you see that there is a papillary muscle which is quite thickened the thickened cordy you have a cordy here of the papillary muscle then you see here this is the bridge between the two okay the two papillary muscle you see this bridge between the two and it's very clear on a 3d that two papillary muscles bridge together that's another type of infravalvular abnormality of a mitral stenosis this is one papillary muscle another papillary muscle the medial and then there's a bridge between the two and then you see this bridge you see again this a bridge from uh, a pical view and from uh, below so both side you see this bridge connecting the papillary muscle which is an extremely real finding in one of our cases and thank you very much this completes lv inflow obstruction series and i hope you liked it continue watching uh, this channel even subscribe it so that the moment i 
put another KSU would be notified and happy learning.